So hello everyone, you're very welcome to the gathering today. Lerda celebrates 35 years of Erasmus Plus. I'm Zainab Oladale, a TV presenter and reporter, and I'm your MC for this evening. It's been a while since Lergas has been able to put on a large event like this one, so we're absolutely delighted to have you here with us today. The Human Library at the back is already in full swing. I hope everyone gets a chance to talk with both Lergas staff and project participants. At the back of your name badge, there should be a QR code which you can scan to find out who's at what table, but also there's some list on the wall back there so you can also find out who's at what table there. So I'm gonna give you a brief of what's gonna happen this evening. We are now about to meet some Lerga staff and hear about the various aspects of Erasmus Plus European Solidarity Corps and the online platforms supported by Ler Erasmus Plus and Lergas. After this short chat, you're welcome to the Human Library for about 45 minutes and when that's over, we'll ask you to be seated again. So this evening we'll be hearing from Lergas Executive Director, Lorraine Gilligan, who will launch the new Erasmus Plus Sports Award. Igor Kamil will also be joining us to talk about the power of sport in lifting people's spirits. The last thing on today's agenda will be the award ceremony for European Innovation in Teaching, e-twinning, and European Language Label. For now, though, we are going to turn our attention to some of the areas in which Erasmus Plus is active. On stage, we have Deirdre Finlay, representing the education and training sectors. Next up is Carmel Walt, representing the youth sector and European Solidarity Corps. And of course, John Tate, representing the various platforms that operate under Erasmus Plus and Lergas. I'm gonna ask them each question, each a question each. So <laughs> John, what opportunity are available in your area? Yeah, so there's uh, lots of opportunities for people to take part in the supporting programs and the online platforms. So for example, we have Eurodesk, uh, so young people can find uh, opportunities to study and work abroad. Uh, we have the Languages Programme, um, which highlights and rewards innovative language programs uh, and projects. Uh, and we also have the online platforms of Apale and Each Winning, uh, where educators can, um, can log on and they can register and find partners to do online projects or they can seek professional development um, or yeah, they can, they can do lots of things. Uh, so all of these um, programs are standalone programs in themselves, but they can also be used then in tandem with Erasmus Plus projects uh, to enhance those projects. And yourself, Carla, what opportunities are available? Okay, so there are loads in uh, Razzle Plus Youth and European Sorry Corps. Um, these um, opportunities are for young people, youth workers, youth organisations, or people working with young people as well. So, for example, for young people, there are opportunities in to do youth exchanges, to go volunteering across Europe. There are also a new action called Discovery EU Inclusion, which allows young people to discover Europe by interrail. And also then we have opportunities to... Um, do participation projects or salary projects where young people can be kind of active citizens in participation as well. In terms of for youth workers, then you can look at um, to develop youth workers' competencies. There's loads of things called like trainings, there's study visits, there's contact making seminars to meet other partners and to share your uh, practices. And then for organizations as well, there's um, kind of strategic projects where it can enhance the quality of youth work at the national and European level as well. Thank you very much. And Deirdre, what opportunities are available? Yeah, so in education and training, that covers school education, adult education, and also vocational education and training. And the majority of activities that we see people engaging in center around training courses, so staff in schools or staff in an education setting may undertake a training course. We also see job shadowing, that's quite popular. And also we see quite a lot of partnership projects where maybe one workplace or one organization partners with another and shares ideas over a period of time. Um, and then when it comes to, um, I suppose, an example, what we find is, say, for example, a teacher in a school has identified some needs in the area of ICT. She could undertake a course, do that in another country, come back to the school, share the learning with the pupils, share the, 
learning in the classroom and into the wider school community, so it really has great impact. And another opportunity in our area is called CASE. This is, we are proud partners in a project um, funded by Peace4, which is um, offering uh, opportunities for schools in cross-border areas in between North and South to explore the whole area of shared education. And across the floor, can you tell us about a product that has inspired you? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's countless projects that have inspired me over the years. Um, one of the things that I'm always really impressed with is the kind of range of different projects that you can do. So, for example, the, the versatility of a, a platform like Each Winning uh, allows a teacher to uh, create a project that could last for a couple of weeks or, in some cases, a couple of years. Um, they can uh, cover all areas of the curriculum uh, through their e-training projects, uh, or they can make it a more kind of team-based project. So we have different uh, yearly teams. So, for example, they could do projects on climate change, uh, cultural identity, media literacy. So really kind of good themes for, for pupils to explore. Um, one thing I found particularly inspiring, though, was, was during COVID, uh, when we were in a state of lockdown and all the schools were, were shut down, uh, and the amount of projects that continued and were even created during lockdown was, was so inspiring and impressive. Um, it gave an opportunity for, for teachers to, to maintain that contact uh, with their students, but not just with their students, also to keep that collaboration with their international partners as well during a time when, when that kind of connection was needed more than ever. Um, so yeah, just um, really, really inspiring. Yeah, I think it's really difficult to pinpoint like a really inspirational project because they're all are inspirational. Like, I see a few of the lads in front there as well, like who have great examples of projects. Um, I think from me and from the last few years working in Rouse Plus Youth, um, I think for me what's inspiring is seeing the how pro proactive organisations are engaging in these projects. There's, there's so many new opportunities in under Rouse Plus Youth and European Society Corps for youth organisations and young people and to see our projects or organisations engaging them, like with in terms of accreditation, like these are long-term um, Rats Plus projects, and people are really engaging in these and putting them as a, a regular part of their work with young people, which is amazing to see. Um, I think with the terms of European Year of Youth as well, we had the um, micro grants, which I suppose a few people here have applied for. But we, we found out today that we have like over 100 organisations that applied for micro grants as well, which is amazing work with a local level with young people as well and that's really inspirational as well and I always think there's so many more opportunities available as well for organisations and young people. Thanks. Passing that question on to you. Yeah, well, we, we have so many great projects, as the guy said here. Um, what is really motivating and exciting is to meet the people who've undertaken them. And we meet people at the early stages. They come to our information sessions and our workshops, the events that we run. Um, they tell us the kernel of the idea that they have, and we support them through the process to turn it into a really great project. Um, and so we actually have lots of information events coming up in the next few weeks and months, um, and that's inspiring, I think, because we really want to see people um, with fresh ideas who are what we call newcomers, but also those who've, who've participated before. And yeah, I think everything's inspiring in its own way, and everyone who comes along to talk to us, we're, we're just naturally inspired by the work they do at local level. And most importantly, where can people find out more information about the different aspects you've mentioned? Yeah, I mean, the, f the first place I would um, advise people to go would be to the, the Largus website, where they can find all the information they need on the specific uh, programs that they're interested in. Also, to have a look at our Meet the Team section on the website, so you can find the relevant staff member or the relevant team that you need to kind of contact to get all the information that you need and all the support that you may need. Uh, in terms of the online platforms uh, for adult education, you register on a Pale and you can um, uh, take advantage of all the um, facilities there. Uh, in terms of school education, uh, to register on the European School Education Platform. Uh, that's the new home of eTwinning and the School Education Gateway. So you can take part in all uh, kind of online activities there and um, professional development opportunities. 
Um, I suppose it's important to note as well um, our MailChimp or our newsletter as well. So if you go onto the Lurgus website, um, each sector can apply for to up-to-date information through our newsletters. We also have our Eventbrite link, which has a number of national events. But if you're looking for European training opportunities then as well, there are two different Salto platforms, one for education and training and then one for youth and European Salto Corps, which people can apply to um, do kind of European trainings as well and opportunities that we support through Lurgus as well. Yeah, well, all of those t um, tools and channels are perfect. Um, the team at Lergus are experts. They're fantastic. They can guide people with small questions through to more technical questions. And I'm a big believer. I think we are in what you know peer support. So if you can find somebody who has done a European project before or taken up one of these platforms or tools before via Lergus and get their inside story, that can be a really nice way to you know gain the confidence to to go forth with project development or with the next stage of, of whatever journey you're planning. Super. Thank you so much, Carmel, John, and Deirdre. Thank you. Thanks. So now the Human Library will go ahead at the back there until 7 p.m. Um, we will call you back to the front to hear from the Executive Director of Lergas, Lorraine Gilligan, and, launch, and she will launch the Sports Strand of Erasmus Plus and, of course, our awards ceremony. So make sure that you scan the back of your name badge for any information about who's back there and anybody you want to talk to. See you in a bit. Hello. You're very welcome back. I hope you got to mingle and have some thoughtful discussions or at least got a bite to eat and a drink. Now to tell us about the 35 years, sorry, now to tell us about what 35 years of Erasmus means and to officially welcome the new sports strand and to the Erasmus family, I'd like to welcome Executive Director of Lergas, Lorraine Gilligan, to the stage. Thanks very much, Zainab. I have to say, you're all looking beautiful in real life right now. It's been a long time since we had a big event with so many people in the flesh, so to speak, and you look fabulous this evening. I have a few notes to help me guide you through and guide me through a little bit, uh, what I want to get through to speak to you a little bit about tonight, but um, I've been corrected on them already, so I'm going to stop and point at the people who told me to say something different as I go through this. <laughs> Um, but if you haven't already met me, I'm Lorraine and I'm the Executive Director of Lergus and many of you know us and some of you are new to us, but what we are is we're a national agency uh, for many European programmes and initiatives and we really do view our work as being transformational in the lives of the people who get to have the opportunities and who participate in European activities. I want to take a very short moment to appreciate the Lergus staff for their work and for their commitment. You can give them a round of applause. That's enough, not too much. I have, I'll never get any good out of them, not too much. Um, but I do want to thank them and I want to thank all of our projects and our organisations and our colleagues from DFA who are here this evening who supported this human library that we've created for you. I've met lots of people and I know you've all picked up huge amounts of inspiration and ideas and contacts and networks and that's exactly what we hoped you'd be able to catch from that human library. A bit of wisdom as well sometimes. Um, so it is really, I mean, what this is about, it's, it's my pleasure really to welcome you all here to what is, in effect, it's actually not, I was told, but I was going to say this is the first large in-person gathering that we've had in Lurgis since 2019. But then I remembered that we had 200 children on a train twice already this summer. <laughs> so we did do that, but without children, this is the largest in-person gathering that we've had for Lurgis since 2019 before the world changed. I was also told to remind you that it's Lurgus Gathering, but it's also hashtag Lurgus Gathering, so make sure that you use that in all of your social medias. Um, and we have met each other since then, in the time between. Uh, we've met each other online, and we've met each other maybe in some smaller events and more intimate settings, and it's been wonderful to reconnect. But that's really what the team in Lurgus wanted to create for this evening. They wanted to create a dynamic and a fun moment to celebrate reconnection to get back together and to talk about our shared values, uh, to really um, 
to think about what we're here for, which is 35 years of international cooperation and exchange under the banner of what is Erasmus. Okay? And for those of us who are a long time involved in European programmes, you'll remember that there were very many strands of separate European programmes which began with Erasmus Plus 35 years ago. And I'm happy to say, I don't, my memory doesn't go back quite that far, but not far off it, I will say. Uh, but we have seen those programmes emerge over the years, different programmes that you'll all recognise the names of, or some of you will, like Leonardo da Vinci, like Comenius, uh, EVS, Youth for Europe. Uh, this year we're celebrating a European Year of Youth. And all of those uh, different strands and those different threads of programmes have transformed into a single but very diverse programme now. It's a program with loads of moving parts and different facets and different faces, a little bit like the Rubik's Cubes that you have on the tables in front of you. Um, and we know and love that program as Erasmus+. Plus. Okay, now it's Erasmus+. Plus. So in Ireland, we work with a sister national agency, the Higher Education Authority. Um, and we, do, we work with them to deliver the full scope of the European programmes uh, that are extraordinary, that you're delivering on a day-to-day -day basis across really diverse communities of learning and education. And together we always emphasise the plus in Erasmus+. Plus. So it's really wonderful today to see that the diversity of the programme is still growing and it's still expanding. And in 2023, we're going to be very happy in Lurgis to introduce a new Erasmus Plus sport mobility community to Erasmus Plus family. So you can, you can clap for that too. <laughs> Which is really exciting. So we have the chance to bring in a whole new community, a whole new learning community into the Erasmus family, to introduce a whole new range of opportunities for learning and for exchange and for cooperation that we are so happy and excited to support within Lurgis. I think it will be familiar to all of you who are involved in Erasmus+, Plus, but you'll know that the themes and the priorities that we talk about in terms of inclusion and diversity and participation and well-being and mental health, they're very familiar uh, themes and priorities also in the world of sport. And they've been very long established within the world of the world of sport and also in the world of Erasmus Plus. So I'm very convinced that this joining, if you like, of sport and Erasmus Plus and the strand that we're going to introduce next year for coaches and grassroots sports and volunteers, it's really going to unlock new experiences and practices and partnerships uh, to explore our shared values under Erasmus Plus. We want always to try and bring more diversity into the family of Erasmus Plus and to try and create more opportunities and more exchange and more connection because I think at the end of it, I think we all really understand that ultimately when we do all of those things, we find that we have much more in common than we ever thought we did most of the time. And in Lurgis, our vision, which many of you will already know and connect with, our vision is to support an inclusive Ireland uh, where we can all participate in the transformational value of European programmes and activities and be supported to reach our full potential. So I'm coming to the end of what I have to say, but I, I do want to talk about the, the Lurgis family a little bit wider. We have our staff team, which are amazing and have seen us through some very tough times. And we're also welcoming a lot of new energy and new uh, people to our team. So you have had the opportunity to talk to them all in the human library today. And there's huge expertise in the room. So I do really encourage you as much as possible to try and pick up on the wisdom and the little nuggets of expertise that are here and enjoy yourself while you do it. Um, but I know that we're often, we, we recognise in Lergus that we're very privileged to be supported as well by the colleagues that we have within various government departments. Um, they do share our vision and they do support our work really well. And we're also guided very well by our board members and some of those are in the room this evening and we're very appreciative to them and the guidance and support and absolute support that they do give us during hard times. So for us, we think that gatherings like today are really important and they, they're really essential to bring different people together in a room under a common banner. Today, it's our banner and it's Erasmus Plus and 35 years of all of the good stuff that it brings. But it's, it's also important because 
it brings the people who are on the ground uh, doing the projects and making them real into the room and into a space and you get to meet each other and sometimes you might be feeling like you're alone doing your project and struggling through your application form or figuring out what's an OID uh, but you're not alone and, and rooms like this are the rooms where you'll figure out that there are other people in the same place as you are doing similar work to you with the same passion for what you're doing and the staff team in Lurgis will always be there to support you in achieving your projects and in achieving your objectives through Erasmus Plus and all of the other projects you'll have heard about here today that we're going to be celebrating very, very soon. So we do want to recognise the role that you play in bringing all of those transformational projects and their values and their opportunities and the priorities into action in your day-to-day -day work. So the last thing I'll do is, I suppose, thank all of you for joining us in celebration of hashtag Lurgis Gathering. Uh, this evening and I hope that we'll be together again soon and we'll be able to have more conversations and enjoy each other's company and hear the wisdom that we have to share. But I will hand you over now to a special guest who's joining us this evening. Uh, Igor Camille is from Smithfield Boxing Club and I'm sure you'll join me in hearing uh, and appreciating his own story of transformation that he's going to share with you this evening. So thank you so much. Hope you've enjoyed your evening and I'll hand you to, over to Igor. Thank you everybody. <laughs> Oh, no pressure. Very good evening to you all. Uh, and you all look very, very, very beautiful, may I just say that. <laughs> and the best dress you can wear is a smile. And there's a lovely smile across the room. Um, as Lorraine um, reminded me, I was doing uh, talks um, about two years ago. I was invited for the languages. And oh my God, this guy was before me, um, Irish lad, and he spoke eight languages. I swear to God. Uh, he worked for UN. I hope he's not here tonight. But, uh, <laughs> and I was sitting down convinced, there's me, uh, three languages fluently, four languages, okay, she understand six languages. I thought I'd be just, do you know what I mean, selling the show. <laughs> this fella come out singing in Croatian, doing all this razzmatazz, I just like, you know, it was under massive pressure coming out after him, you know. But, um, so today is much e easier, lowly, smiley faces. Um, what I really would like to talk to you is about the um, amazing, amazing experience that I had with Lergis. And Lorraine reminded me, um, I presume you're all um, Lergis workers, but I, I'm not sure if you know the effect, profound effect and impact he's making on the youth exchanges that you're funding, that you're uh, strongly supporting. It was back in 2010, I'm originally from Ukraine, and I work as a sports officer with Dublin City Council. So back in 2010, I remember I was supporting one of the uh, uh, sports programs, and this uh, youth coordinator, I suppose, in youth reach, um, he having an awful time in some way, in my eyes, uh, with the youths in the sense that they were uh, to them, it was jokes and banter, you know, and he's knowing them on a daily basis. But they, they were slagging his runners, do you know what I'm saying? And he's, the way he's dressed and all that, you know. I was like, I, I was just looking at this. I said, Jerry, why don't we just... Um... Now, it was just... Ireland was, sorry, coming out, out of a recession. So it was just the times that, you know, things weren't really the best at the time. And, um, and I said, why don't we show these guys, bringing them to my motherland, and I just introduced them, mingled them in among the youths of their age, of the same, in some ways, similar level of problems mar from marginalized areas. And let's see if they pick up something, if that has some effect on them. Because their value is in the runners. But let maybe. So we call the project Help Yourself. And at the time, correct me, Lorraine, if I'm wrong, um, Ukraine wasn't really in the radar because it, it has to be EU countries only. So we had to jump through the few hula hoops to, to get there. Um, but we got there. And at, at first, it looked, it looked like it was holidays for them. I just, ah, yeah, that, that, that brings us nowhere. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, but after that, I bumped in, six years after, I bumped into three of them, the guys that were there, uh, youth, young people that were, that were with us. And um, they had all sorts of problems, some young ladies with early pregnancy, loads of kids and things like that, and um, really, really hard going for them, the guys with, the, with criminal records and things, you know, and I remember I bumped into one of them in the Pope, I didn't even recognize them, and they just, 
They couldn't talk enough to me what it did to them, what exchange done to them. We went, we were in um, kind of sporting events. There was boxing, the uh, GAA, uh, when, while, while in Ukraine. But I, I remember them going with the, with the young people and sharing their just basic lives. As I said, from outside looking in, it looked like they're just having a good time, a great holiday. But I remember partic this particular lady, what she was saying to me about how it changed her perspective, how it changed her outlook in life, that these people have 50 times less opportunities, 50 times less, I suppose, uh, advantages, and yet it doesn't stop them to look in life very differently and really striving in life. And she just, she couldn't stop telling me uh, how, how it impacted her. So I just want you to really understand that what you're doing is really, really changing people's lives on a daily basis. Uh, on the other side, I, I'm also wearing the hat of, um, um, as Lorraine said, um, Smithville Boxing Club. I am a co-founder and a head coach with Smithville Boxing Club. We've been doing this for years, and at times we forgot that we actually could tap in to a bit of funding, the exchanges that we're doing, do you know what I mean? So, so we're doing it with our, a lot of help that we kind of built up over the years. And this amazing project we have called Smithville Box Fest. So um, it was happening for the past... 12 years, if I'm not mistaken. And um, during the pandemic, it had to stop. But it attracted close to 15 countries from around the globe. And um, when it stopped during the pandemic, um, with obviously what's going on with Ukraine, we restarted it. And the heavy participants of the, all those years were um, youths from Ukraine. So we just said, why don't we just do it? Uh, this year, just to dedicate to to demonstrate them our support, to demonstrate our solidarity with them, and why don't we just do it with them solely? But prior to that, when when this horrific war that started in Ukraine, we opened our doors to anybody that wants to, I don't know, uh, release the stress and you know just explore themselves and uh, join our club to, in any capacity. And happens to be that there's a good few youth joined, uh, some of them even boxed for Ukraine. So this fascinating story with this lady, who is um, Lisa Miguel is her name. So she just immersed herself, initially came in 23 years of age, initially came in a little bit timid, a little bit kind of into herself. I couldn't really get uh, my head around, uh, obviously, I suppose, experiencing some hard time. And um, over the months, still really into herself in a lot of her behavior within the club, even when you speak to her in Ukrainian language or whichever. So really, woman of few words. So when she heard that this project happened, the Ukrainians coming in, she really immersed herself into it and really was happy with, with joining the project. So we had them five days in Galway, uh, different, again, they got to see the fantastic sightseeing and exchange the food, culture, you name it, we, we've done it all. And then they had a fight night. So she fought there really well. So come to the week, that was 10 days project. So come to the Wednesday, um, which they came back to Dublin. And I said, Lisa, how are you getting on? Oh, I'm fine, just didn't sleep last night. I said, what's going on? And this is the first time she ever opened to me. And she said, uh, well, my town was getting bombarded. She's in the surroundings of Kiev. And she said, um, so I was on the phone to my brother and my sister. And as I was talking to them, she said, I could have heard bombs. I could have heard the shaking of the house while, while things. She said, I said, I said, it must be 600 times I said bye-bye to them. And I just, I didn't know what, what to say. I, I just became speechless. I said, listen, I, first of all, you don't need to fight and the, the fight that we set up with ourselves um, later in the week on Saturday. I said, definitely take as much time as you want. Do what you just, in, if we can assist you in any possible way, and you know what she said to me? Oh no, please, I want to fight. I really do want to fight, this is my fight. I just, I was blown away with it, do you know what I'm saying? I was absolutely, I suppose, uh, it's just how that changed her perspective, how that helped her to be staying sane. Uh, during that night, uh, they had to go down in the cell up uh, just to, to see, uh, to save themselves from the, from possible 
uh, bombing from possible to, to stay in life. So it's only days after we reflected and we realized what we're doing to, to the people's lives and what you all in, in this room doing by supporting these projects and um, going along with it. So we hope, stay in touch. We will help, we will, <laughs> we will do more and more of this. And um, thank you so much for having me. And I'll be talking to you one more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren Gunnigan and Igor Tumil. I also I really enjoyed your talk also. Um, now it's time for the awards. Our first award this evening is the European Innovative Teaching Awards. The European Innovative Teaching Award is an award that showcases outstanding teaching practices carried out as part of Erasmus Plus projects. The award recognizes the work of teachers and schools and celebrates the exceptional contribution they make to their profession. We have two award winners for this, Manor House School and Skolwera Fatima. I'd like to welcome Manor House School to the stage to receive their award. <laughs> Our next award is the E20 National Quality Label. The E20 National Quality Label provides concrete, concrete recognition for teachers and students who have achieved excellence through an e-twinning project. NQL's boost motivation and our public affirmations of a school's commitment to quality and openness in European collaborative work. We have 14 winning schools, of which six are with us this evening. I'd like to invite all of those to the stage. Here's the full list of winning schools. The King's Hospital School, Maynooth Post Primary School, <laughs> Balbriggan Community College, <laughs> Mans Call San <Saint> Nicholas, <laughs> Burroughs O'Kane Community College, <laughs> Garms Call Vic Dermada. Ballyhonis Community School, St. Cronin's JNS, Sacred Heart Secondary School, um, Kilglass National School, St. Andrew's College, St. Paul's National School, I'm looking around to see where the schools are. <laughs> uh, Pavel Skol Isida. Our final award this evening is the European Language Label Award. The ELL is a European award that highlights and awards innovative projects in the field of language, learning, teaching and promotion. The ELL is open to all fields of education and training. In 2022, we are awarding eight European language labels. And here with us this evening, we again have six representatives from winning organizations. So you don't have to clap in between each. <laughs> it was great though, I enjoyed the applause. <laughs> TCD on, oh, I hope I don't make a balls with this. TCD <laughs> on Scaly, <laughs> Milford GAA, Mans Call San Nicholas, TU Dublin, Junior Cycle for Teachers, and PDST. So, next. <laughs> Wait, who am I calling up? <laughs> okay. Who at school is that? We haven't done this in a while. No, no. Um, it's no problem. So we actually do have the second winner of the European Innovative Teaching Awards oh. here with us in the room. So we'll start by inviting you up to accept your award as well. <laughs> No worries. 
And if we'd like to invite the winners of the Each Winning Awards uh, up to the stage as well to collect your awards. So if you don't just get up and come here, we're going to name you all again. Yeah. Uh, so up you get if you're in the room and come and collect your awards. <laughs> So we're going to call up the six representatives from winning or from the language European language labels winning organisation. So TCD on Scaly, are you here? Super. Mill for GAA. Don't be shy, you can come up. Manskull San Nicholas. TU Dublin. Junior Cycle for Teachers and PDSD. Perfect. So if you've just won an award, um, please stay back so we can get more pictures. But now we're at the close of the event. So thank you very much for joining us this evening. It's been a pleasure to be your host. And thank you to Lairgas for putting this fabulous gathering on. We hope you got the most out of it. And feel free to enjoy the refreshments. I know I've, I've been. <laughs> and snacks made available. Have a very good, good evening. And I hear that there's cake somewhere. So enjoy the cake as well. <laughs>